Okay, as you probably noticed when I did the developers, developers, developers reference, I'm quite old, right? So this is another session where I get to do like, what are the new things, new kids doing? What is up with this static type thing? Like, what is this? So uh, thanks, and uh, let me see what it is. Thank you. Yeah, so, hi, my name is Michal. Yeah, so my name is Michal. I'm a software developer at Fretray, like a small uh, malware analysis startup in Build. And today uh, I'm going to show you uh, how the static typing works in Python, what can you do with it, and, well, what can you do to avoid some issues with it. Yeah. We'll start uh, briefly with saying what uh, MyPy itself is. Then we'll go through type annotations, type inference, some very special types that MyPy has. Then we go through union types, guard types, social polymorphies, new types. Well, at the end, we'll go to generics. And then, not to make things too sweet, I will tell you what problems can you encounter while using MyPy in your projects. Yeah, so let's start with uh, MyPy itself. So it's a Python program that allows uh, checking for correctness of type annotations, those uh, standard type annotations uh, from Python itself. How many of you are using those annotations in your code, just from curiosity? Whoa, that's really pleasant surprise. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you can install this uh, program with pip, but I guess uh, you know it already, and uh, you can run it over uh, one uh, Python file, you can uh, run it recursively over a directory or a module. And because of it, you don't have to type the whole project uh, from the very beginning, you can go file by file, uh, directory by directory. And what is very important, but it's more like a feature of uh, those type annotations in Python themselves, uh, that, uh, well, after the type checking is done, uh, they do not do any additional overhead to your program. They are just not existent at this point. Yeah, so let's start with type annotations themselves. Uh, since most of you are using it, I will go very quickly over them. So we can uh, annotate variables, uh, and you do it with uh, putting the type after the column. You can annotate the function arguments. Uh, well, similarly to variables, you put the uh, argument name, colon, and uh, the type. And then the return type of the function is put after this kind of arrow. And uh, here in this example, we have a function that takes an integer. And when we try to pass, uh, to pass string there, uh, MyPy will strongly object, uh, saying that we are passing a type that is incompatible with uh, what function is requiring. And uh, some of you might be worrying that, well, it will turn into another Java where you have to type every single line of your code. But uh, fear not. Uh, there's a thing called type inference, and MyPy does it really well. So uh, in short uh, terms, it means that you don't have to type every single line, it's enough for you to type just function arguments and the return types. And then uh, MyPy will be able to infer the correct type uh, from all the calls. So in our case, uh, result one, even though it's untyped, the inferred type is a string because this is the return type of the function. And then when we try to pass the string uh, to function two, MyPy objects, even though uh, result one itself is not uh, marked as string. And go even further, because uh, it's really useful in classes, where it's just enough for you to type the, uh, uh, the argument, the constructor. You don't have to type the attribute itself. Uh, well, uh, MyPy manages to do it uh, for you. And here, in this case, the attribute on the class is of type int, and we cannot add string to it. And MyPy can even go like, one step further, even if you add the member variables sometime later in the code, uh, sometime in the method, uh, not in the constructor, it's still able to, uh, to get the type right. Uh, but if you, if you have uh, two incompatible types, so like an integer and string, uh, select to the same attribute, well, it will not work. So, uh, you can type your uh, program, your uh, functions with like plethora of types, numbers, strings, collections, but with collections, just remember to use the uppercase names from typing package, not the uh, Python keyword of list or dict. 
you can use your own classes uh, for this uh, type annotations. There is none. There's optional, quite a special type we'll be talking about later. The lambdas uh, with a very well, cumbersome typing notation, but uh, you can still type them. There are two special types and the non-return. Uh, we'll be talking about them very soon. And generics. So let's go quickly through any, because uh, this is, uh, let's say, a uh, thing that you should know but exist and never use in your code. So uh, any basically means that, uh, well, the argument can be anything, and because of it, MyPy just gives up. It does not uh, does any type checking on or, or things that are any. You can call any function, use it as an iterator, uh, use any operator on it, and MyPy is uh, completely happy about it. So you should, well, basically never, uh, never ever use it in your production code if you want to have any benefits of uh, type annotations. Uh, yeah, it basically uh, turns off the type checking. There's another very special type, and it's no return. And well, it basically means that the function never returns. And if we try to return from a function that should uh, never return, there is uh, an error from MyPy. And uh, you might be thinking, like, what do we need in such a no return? It can be very useful, I will show you later, but it's very important that you just cannot create an instance of no return. But uh, keep in mind uh, this type for slightly later. So uh, you can type your code with uh, some annotations, and uh, th there could be like uh, very different types. And uh, well, once typed, uh, they can be checked with MyPy. And uh, there's this type inference that helps you very much, but so you don't have to type every single line. So having those uh, basics in mind, let's go to something more juicy, more advanced types. So let's start with union types. And uh, union types, well, uh, on this uh, Rust talk, uh, we, had, uh, we saw enums, and union, union types are just basically enums uh, in the Rust sense for Python. So we can create a class and say that shape is either circle or rectangle. And uh, uh, even though there are two completely different classes, they don't have a common root, uh, no base class, uh, we can treat them as shape. So when we have a function that accepts shape, we can pass there a circle or rectangle. Uh, yeah, and as opposed to enum, uh, we don't have to. Uh, as opposed to enum, they can have different uh, different constructors. They have different shapes inside. And what is also very nice about them, because you don't have to modify the base class, you don't have to say that a circle is a shape. Uh, you can uh, use uh, some types from external libraries as well. So let's uh, take a look at uh, one of the usages of union types in the. Uh, standard library of type uh, Python. So there's optional. So uh, let's suppose uh, you have a function that returns a string, and well, it for some reasons returns none. And well, you see in the runtime error that uh, you cannot use plus for non type and string. I'm pretty sure, like most of you, saw it at a certain point uh, of your Python career. Um, well, MyPy uh, objects because uh, none is uh, not a string. But well, let's, let's face it, uh, we sometimes want to return a non for a function or accept none. And uh, well, in standard library, there is a way to indicate it. It's optional. So uh, when we have a type optional of string, it means that uh, it could be either a string or a type. Uh, a string or a non. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a generic type. Uh, I will tell something more about them slightly later. But uh, you can bear in mind that uh, this is the way of showing that this particular type can be also none for, uh, for whatever reasons. And uh, well, you might be thinking, how, how do I even work with this optional? Uh, how do I, I don't know, append to optional list or whatever? So uh, MyPy uh, comes uh, with a thing called uh, type guards or type narrowing. So in our case, when we have uh, uh, a function that accepts optional, we just cannot add one to number because, well, uh, plus does not work with uh, non and int. 
but uh, MyPy is able to get it right. Uh, if we do this check if number, MyPy uh, can already see that, okay, the uh, int is always true, none is false, so we can cross out none. So in else, it's for sure, uh, sorry, so uh, we, cannot, we can cross out none, so here it must be a number, so we can uh, safely call uh, plus on it. You don't have to do any magical tricks, it's just a standard Python, but you would probably use it even without types. And it can go like even a step further. Uh, if we go back to the, uh, to the example of this shape, so we had a circle and rectangle, but uh, let's suppose we added a triangle to it. And we had a function, quite stupid, that is checking if something is circle. If not, uh, it, print, uh, it prints the rectangle. And of course, uh, it, it compiles, I mean, uh, the type check uh, goes through, but we pass the triangle and we get rectangle, which is, well, quite not expected. What we can do there is uh, there's a thing in standard library called assert never, and this is where you see uh, the type of, uh, of this argument is of type no return. And now, if we put uh, always in cases where we are dealing with uh, union types, uh, in the else clause, the assert never, uh, MyPy will always uh, object if we missed one argument because of this type narrowing, right? We have the first if, uh, if circle, okay, we can cross out circle from our list, then we have, uh, so with this rectangle or triangle, then the else if we can call rectangle, so the only left type to the else could be a triangle, but when we try to pass the triangle to the function that requires uh, no return, well, it fails, it won't be compiled. So this way, you can make sure that you always handled all the possible cases. But uh, this is not the only uh, nice thing that uh, Python type system uh, allows you to use. Uh, if you ever tried Go uh, or uh, TypeScript, there's uh, this quite a nice thing called structural polymorphism. So uh, let's suppose we have a function and we have two totally separate types, admin and employee and uh, both of them have email. And we just want a function to write a function that just sends email to one of them. But, well, they don't have a common type. Well, you can create a union type in this uh, regard. It will work. Uh, but there's something nicer. And of course, when you put any there, uh, it will work with anything. And as we already said, we should never use any. So there is a, a very explicit solution. Uh, you can create a protocol. And uh, this is a very nice uh, thing, especially compared with uh, dynamicism of Python. You can say that uh, given pro given uh, protocol uh, should have, uh, I mean, functions which adhere to protocol should implement a function, uh, a property of email that returns a string. And uh, everything uh, that is passed to the function sent email have to have a property of uh, named email that returns string. And uh, this is more or less how you would be doing it with dynamic Python without typing, but you can assume that there will be a certain function passed. Uh, I, the object will have the certain function. But this way, you can make it very, very explicit and uh, checked uh, during uh, type checking if all the possible objects that are passed to this function are actually adhering uh, to the protocol. And uh, yeah, you can create uh, this polymorphic relation so certain many objects can come to the same function and do uh, the same thing. And uh, again, uh, similar to union types, you don't have to uh, modify the type itself. They don't have to have any base class. Uh, everything is done only in type checking. And uh, well, this is, uh, in my opinion, great for modeling data where you have uh, certain uh, big, very big uh, objects, uh, but you just need one or two fields from them. You can just uh, put them in this protocol. And it's well, much more explicit than union types when you are interested in like very special uh, method or property on, uh, on the object. But well, the disadvantage is that you just cannot like, right-click and find uh, all the possible implementations because of the uh, dynamicness of uh, this thing. So, uh, as uh, promised, let's quickly go to generics. 
Uh, generics are quite a generic uh, programming construct, uh, which, uh, well, is uh, quite old. And uh, they're used to indicate that uh, in this certain class or function, you don't really care about what type will be passed there as long as uh, the type uh, stays the same. So in our case, we create my list of uh, type int. And uh, because of it, uh, we can only append int there. And uh, when we do pop, uh, we also get int because uh, the type is uh, my list of type int. And even though we say we don't care about type, we just cannot put string there because it's already defined as a my list of int. And, uh, well, just to indicate that you don't care what's inside, but it just needs to say the same all the time. And uh, there's this important thing that uh, if you don't put the type explicitly there, uh, MyPy will infer it to any and, well, the, all your uh, work of putting type annotations will go to vain. So let's suppose you have those type annotations everywhere. Uh, you're using uh, union types were needed, sometimes protocols when, uh, when you think it's nice. But there's still like one more level above that you can go to make your code more type safe and explicit. And it called, it's called uh, new type. So let's suppose uh, we have a function that takes two integers, company ID and order ID. And even though, uh, well, uh, we, we have type annotations there, it's still possible to do like a stupid human mistake and pass order ID in the place where we needed company ID. Because, well, they're both ints. And MyPy will be very happy to, to accept it. Types are matching, but the logic, well, does not. But uh, fortunately for us, uh, there's a way that we can uh, decrease the surface of uh, this kind of errors. And uh, we can create our new uh, quite explicit types. So we, we can uh, create a type order ID and company ID. And, uh, well, they are all type, the underlying type is int. So uh, the, we mark the function that accepts uh, only company ID and order ID. And now whenever we want to pass it the other way around, MyPy will already see it and uh, object. And what is very nice, uh, we can also pass uh, order ID and company ID to all the functions that just take int, because the, the underlying type is integer, and uh, it can always go down. But if you want to uh, change integer into uh, company ID, you have to be very explicit about it. Yeah, uh, this is like this uh, additional nice layer of uh, safety. And uh, I think uh, it adds a lot of explicitness to our code and uh, makes, uh, well, makes human mistakes uh, Rare, more rare, and uh, it makes it much easier to read. Yeah, so, uh, like, we are almost at the end, but uh, there are still some things we found of us, so uh, you can create, uh, you can, uh, create uh, relationships when type is A, on B, uh, A or B with union types. And uh, whenever you have some optionality, something uh, can be known, uh, you can mark it, or even you should mark it with optional. Uh, yeah, when you have those uh, union types, it's very easy to work with them because of uh, those type guards. And, uh, well, with uh, uh, MyPy can really help us to see uh, where are we and uh, where are we going and from where are we coming. Yeah, uh, you can uh, use uh, the Python uh, fl flexibility using protocols, uh, so it's flexible, but already with uh, some type safety. And, well, if you don't care uh, about the type itself, but you still want uh, to have the typing there, uh, generics are way to go. And, well, as uh, the creme de la creme of this typing, you can put, as maybe not the creme de la creme, like the check on top, you can put uh, new types to make it very nice and explicit. So, but uh, to make the cherry a bit uh, more bitter, let's uh, talk about uh, problems with uh, MyPy at the end. So, as I mentioned before, uh, when we mark an argument as any, the uh, type uh, checking is kind of turned off, and the same happens if we do not mark argument at all. I mean, if, 
if we are uh, if we don't have type annotations, uh, the underlying type is inferred as any. Well, no type checking. Well, the same goes uh, with the return types. It's yeah, it's turned off, and MyPy does not see uh, any issue with it. It gets even more tricky uh, when we want uh, to use it with libraries. So, uh, like with requests uh, case, uh, I mean, first of all, if we have an import that is coming from library and uh, MyPy cannot find uh, types for it, it complains. And uh, with uh, most popular libraries, uh, MyPy is uh, able to suggest uh, installing like additional package if it's necessary, but uh, it's not for every library. And well, some of the libraries are just not typed and uh, you are kind of on your own there. Because uh, if we ignore uh, the, the import issue, uh, all the things that are coming from the library are treated as any. So you can, well, basically uh, do whatever you want on the types that uh, are from the library. Of course, uh, when types are there, uh, MyPy is able to uh, to do uh, some stuff about it, but unfortunately, as I said, not all libraries are typed and uh, you have to deal with it. Yeah, so when you have untyped argument, untyped uh, returns or imports from untyped library, MyPy will not be much of help. And there's like a quite simple solution for it. And it's uh, always running in the strict mode. And strict mode means that whenever MyPy finds any, uh, it just uh, protests very, very loudly and does not uh, allow you to go any further. Of course, it kind of uh, disallows for this gradual type checking because, uh, uh, well, if it's strict, you cannot use any anywhere. Uh, but uh, if you have uh, if you have your uh, directories that are fully type checked, uh, I strongly uh, I, I strongly suggest using MyPy in the strict mode. Of course, it's also uh, slower than uh, just running it without uh, all the strict checkings. So, at the end, uh, well, type checking can help you to find uh, certain classes of errors. Sometimes very stupid mistakes, sometimes uh, even mistakes uh, with uh, business logic, like with this new type case. Uh, MyPy type system is really sophisticated. I mean, it's really up to standard with uh, many uh, typed languages, uh, with those uh, protocols and union types. It's, it's really something modern. And, uh, well, you can do... Uh, you can do this uh, gradual type checking, but MyPy will not help you there. Yeah. And that's all uh, from me. Thank you very much. And Thank you. Thank you, Michal. Any questions? I have one question. I try to use MyPy quite um, a lot, and I really like it. But when it falls short, it's like external libraries that are not or wrongly typed. And a lot yes. of times, people provide type annotations, but don't run MyPy strict in CI. And I needed to patch up a lot of external dependencies to run MyPy in CI. Yes. Um, what is your recommendation? Because well, yeah, I'm also patching it. I mean, it's like a very tedious work, and. Unfortunately, I don't have a good answer here. Uh, it's either changing, I mean, coming to the failing uh, library and try to fix it yourself, or patching it on your uh, on your local. I mean, it's just very tedious, and I don't have like a good uh, good solution there. Uh, and the other question is that um, NumPy is there any future where type annotations for NumPy actually work? Well, this is uh, very difficult for me to say. Uh, well, to be honest, I never used uh, NumPy in my life. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, I can, I can easily imagine, you know, uh, having, uh, having like a big data sets and uh, saying that you just need this and this column with these protocols. But to be honest, uh, I don't know. I never used NumPy. It's difficult for me to say if, there, if it will be typed, typed or not. But I kind of doubt it. I mean, even if, even in like a big data world with uh, Spark, which is in Scala, in theory, it's typed. 
you have uh, all those like data frames which are untyped. So I, I don't see too much uh, hope there. Hi. There's some issue here. Does it work? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the talk. Really interesting. Um, I found out about MyPy uh, when one of my coworkers gave a code review and he pointed out that, yeah, I forgot to import sometimes, like um, you mentioned. And um, it turned out that uh, starting with 3.9, it already supports the basic list, ticked, et cetera, also the built-in types. But any, yeah, the any still has to be imported. Just, um, yeah, as a, as a comment. Yeah. So uh, finally, my my pie, uh, took the step, and now they support also the the uh, small small written buildings. So that's a uh, convenience. Yeah. Okay. So uh, as, as you've seen, I, I do a bit of embedded development. And one thing I worry about uh, when I have when I do this is the memory footprint of those programs. Because uh, when you have 16 kilobytes of memory, every, every little bit counts. Uh, are those type annotations you add to the program, they, they add to the memory footprint of, of your program as well, don't they? Well, you know, like file is bigger, right? With every every character, uh, it's of course bigger. But when it's loads to memory, they are just thrown off. I mean, uh, in runtime, they are not uh, they are not used at all. They are not created as objects in no. memory. Okay. I mean, well, uh, well, Pydantic is something different, right? Uh, Pydantic is kind of created in a way, but uh, uh, it also uh, works in runtime. So it's uh, something uh, different than just those type of annotations. I mean, Pydantic also happens uh, to be nicely validated with MyPy, but uh, it's something like way, uh, something more than just uh, uh, the static types. So, I mean, in Python, you have types. Uh, maybe you do not see them. I mean, even if you're using untyped Python, there are those types. They're like not visible. They are there. So even if you return something, uh, there's always a type, right? I mean, it doesn't matter, to be honest, uh, in the runtime, what's written after this arrow. It's just completely dropped. But whatever you return, the type is still there, right? Runtime. I think, I think you have access to the return type in a function. Of a, of a, I mean the type uh, in the at runtime at runtime. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In this case, yeah. Right. But uh, there are no checks, right? So this is what I meant. But uh, there's no footprint. But you are not. Uh, well, it, it's not checked at the runtime if it's really string but got returned. Yeah. Okay. One question here: um, Could you should you integrate MyPy into the unit tests? Well, I usually run it before unit tests. I mean, uh, locally, I just uh, run it uh, like myself. And on CI, uh, it's like a step before unit tests. Because at least in my opinion, there is no need to run unit tests if the types are not right. I mean, uh, that probably means that there's something wrong already with the logic. And you should not waste your time with uh, running unit tests if something is like obviously wrong. Okay, thank you very much, Michal. Um, I'll give, uh, please. Uh, I'll give static typing checking a try. Like it gets in the way of duct typing, right? Like, you know, like duct typing, the concept of duct typing, like if it quacks like a duck and walks like a duck, it is a duck, but it also gets in the way of reverse duck typing. Well, you can create a protocol, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Quackable or something. 
you know what reverse duck typing is? Reverse duck typing is, it is a duck because it's called a duck even if it barks. 